Christmas, friends, and welcome to the den for this uh, kind of now rarish midweek video. But the timing couldn't be perfect because I usually do um, do videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays if I'm doing a midweek. So yes, the Curve Stainless Review. Very, very excited. But first, I got to show you something else. Um, I got a mail call yesterday, and many of you that follow me on Instagram would have seen the picture. And that is this, my Curve Razor Stand. Now, would you look at that? Isn't that a thing of beauty? Room for four extra plates, as I do plan on adding some plates in the future as time goes on. And the Curve logo that is raised, nice positive logo. And this logo was used with uh, permission from Kiss, uh, Chris Kirchen. So I did not uh, just rip the logo off the internet. I had permission to use the logo and as you can see the razors just sit in there gotta be careful with the stainless because it has a live blade in it and there you go Isn't that gorgeous or what so I will carefully put this down out of the frame and we will get right on with the review All right, so once again, there is the Curve Christopher Bradley with the beautiful Argyle handle, inspired by the Campbell clan in Scotland, uh, by their tartan, their Argyle tartan, and uh, the spelling of the name comes from a street in Edmonton close to the, uh, the Curve shop. That is uh, where the name comes from, if you did not know. And we have a blade loaded in there, and this is the C-plate. Brand new Voskhod. Um, blade gap on this is uh, 0.85 millimeters. And we're gonna get into that here as I lather up. Just so we don't end up with a 40 minute video. Uh, soap for today in the uh, official Canadian Wet Shavers lather bowl is Purely Skinful Smooth Operator. Beautiful uh, espresso and vanilla uh, scent. Um, as many of you know, uh, in the Coyote Cuts, Psychedelic Funk 24mm Tuxedo Knot. Uh, as many of you know, um, Linda is going through some health problems. I was talking to her on uh, Facebook Messenger. So, she's getting some tests and stuff done. And she's kind of stepped back from the website uh, for now in the, in the soap business. So, many of us on the Canadian Wet Shavers group today have been doing a solidarity shave. For Linda and everybody's been using uh, purely skinful products so I am definitely gonna take part in that on this video and what a beautiful scent this is and that should be almost a good load right there so yes so blade exposure blade gap now, I am going to do an AB shave uh, probably on the weekend with the two curves. Because I, I know on their website it says that the B, or not the B, but the, the open combs can be a bit more aggressive than the, um, than the safety bar. For me, personally, I don't really think that's the case, and I will explain why. Um, when you get into exposures, where whether it's negative, positive, or neutral... That has everything to do with how the blade interacts with your face. So, picture the razor, and actually, just so you have it fresh in your head and I have it in my head, if you picture looking at the razor side on, on a 35 degree angle from top cap to safety bar, that is your plane, okay? So just imagine a line from there, from there to there. That's your plane, okay? So, on a, on a negative gap razor, the blade sits inside that plane. Which means if there was an imaginary line going from top cap to the bottom plate on a 35 degree angle, that blade would not touch that imaginary line. On a neutral blade gap, on that same plane, the blade would just touch that line 
where they all meet at the 35 degree angle. So you'd have your line, so you'd have your top cap, blade edge, and then bottom plate. On a positive exposure, the blade sits out past that plane or that imaginary line. So you would have top cap and then blade sticks out a little bit and then you would have your, your bottom plate. And, and really all that does is it changes the blade feel on the face, changes how mild or aggressive the razor shaves. So, so that's what I meant when I on the unboxing when I said about the head geometry. The open comb versus the safety bar, all, all the open comb or the safety bar are is just that bottom, that bottom plate, the bottom interface of the safety system of the razor, essentially, because that's what they were designed for. It was a safety system to protect the blade. So for me, using that, those mathematical equations, I don't feel that, that an open comb would be more aggressive than, than a safety bar, unless you're talking blade gap. And then, and then in the case of these two razors, uh, the B plate is a negative exposure of 0.73 millimeters. And the C plate safety bar is a positive exposure of uh, 0 0.09 millimeters of positive blade exposure with a 0 0.085 or a 0.85 millimeter blade gap. So just based on that criteria alone, one could hazard the educated guess that the C plate would be the more aggressive razor than the B plate open goal. Just going by those metrics. And, and that, that's just what I got from, from my research on, on that. Just comes, I think aggressiveness just comes down to geometry, not the style of, of bar that you have in the bottom plate. Now, not saying Chris and them are wrong. That's not what I'm trying to uh, to point out. That's just my observation. And I think this lather is ready to go. Absolutely love how this stuff lathers up. Scent is phenomenal, nice and strong. Yeah, we're gonna rock and roll on that. First strokes with the stainless. Once again, C plate, Voskhod blade. Four days worth of growth. Haven't shaved since my video on Saturday. And I could tell right now that this four inch handle really fits in my hand really well for the grip that I want to do. Wow, Did I put a blade in there? Yeah, there's a blade in there. Very smooth. Very, very smooth. Very nice heft to this razor. Um, my brass with the three and a half inch handle clocks in at 110 grams. The stainless, um, they are a little bit lighter uh, until you, unless you go up in handle sizes. So since I went with the four inch on this as opposed to the three and a half inch, this actually clocks in at 114 grams. So this is just a little bit heavier than the brass. Now, most of that weight is in the handle as opposed to the brass being a denser metal and it's heavier all around. That being said, with this four inch handle, this is very, very well balanced in the hands. It doesn't feel handle heavy and it doesn't feel head light. And that was the first pass. Yeah, and that did a good job taking down that four days worth of growth just on the seat plate. I have fairly I have fairly uh, 
oh, what's the word to use? I don't have very dense beard growth. And I do have somewhat sensitive skin, so I don't need a wildly aggressive razor to get a good shave. I just need something that that can mow down hair when I need it to mow down hair. And I found the bead plate in the open comb. I could do seven days growth or a daily shaver, no problem. Either or, it was perfect. And I think, just based on those first few strokes, this is going to be right up there too. It's going to be... It's going to be a whatever tool I need. I need it to be daily shaver or once uh, once a week. But um, when you got a couple curves in the den, I don't know how you could go a week without shaving. And go across the grain. Same as the brass. Angle is very easy to find. Oh wow, that's incredibly smooth. And we gotta talk about the soap too. This is a very, very slick soap. Lots of protection, lots of glide. And now we'll go into the uh, the pass. This is where the curve speaks the loudest to me, is my hybrid pass. So my, my grain grows completely sideways. I don't like shaving completely sideways because it always leads to irritation, no matter what I use. So I do a hybrid. So I'll go on an angle, so I kind of catch the hairs kind of in two directions at once and most of my razors the hybrid pass doesn't work that great it does to an extent but I still get irritation but not with the curve And that's been one of the selling points on this razor. And I'm just trying to let the head fill up. I just want to see how much uh, this lather stays in the head. But so far, it's uh, sticking right on there. This razor does have the, um, the little tabs that stick out too. Should point out same as the uh, same as the uh, the brass version and the aluminum. But for me. That's never been an issue. I have a goatee, so I don't do my uh, my mustache area, but I do get close to the ears. And I can't see what I'm doing around the ears, but that being said, I've never caught them uh, with that little tab. And it gives me a positive point of purchase when I am taking these apart to uh, dry them after each shave. I can just grab the grab the top cap and the little tab, unscrew the, the handle and the base plate just falls away. And that way I'm not fumbling around. You know, if it's a dark, dingy day, I have a hard time seeing a blade. If I'm trying to load it in the razor, or trying to uh, dry it off, so it works out, it works out good for me. You can see this lather is held up quite nice in the brush. Overflow is still full. Uh, Linda makes a wonderful, wonderful soap. The scent on this smooth operator is just to die for. Just a nice sweet like vanilla espresso. Oh, so good. So good, all right. This will be the third and final pass. And yeah, really loving that four inch handle because I do have big hands. The three and a half works pretty good, but, but for the way I like to grip a razor, the three and a half, or the four inch is perfect. Now, I know to some people that'd be like gripping a baseball bat, but I like it. I may have to uh, source out a four inch handle maybe for the brass, see if somebody wants to trade in the, in the Canadian group, maybe the four inch is a little bit too big for them.
that's another great selling point about the curve though is the customization i mean this you know you can you can customize the razor to your needs your your handle length the plates you want if you do a bit of research beforehand you can get away with buying one plate because you know exactly how the razor is going to uh exactly how the razor is going to shave from the time you get it all right into the cold rinse wonderful it was a wonderful close irritation free shave just everything i wanted it to be right from the right from the get-go well worth the wait and for the record i did purchase this razor um just in case anybody was wondering uh, this was purchased uh if you're wondering what the price is in canada um they offer free shipping on the stainless i guess not just the promotion I believe that's what Jack was saying. They offer uh, free shipping on all stainless razors. Uh, Thayer's Lemon Witch Hazel. So based on your province and your level of sales tax determines what the final cost will be. Mine was 205 It's my tax. Well worth it. Great price for an ultra premium stainless razor. And let that dry in. I did. Oh yes, I had another thought. Um, so I did take a picture of the serial number because these are serialized. So I'm not quite sure how to read it. Um, I'm going to uh, guess that uh, the second part of the number is the serial number. So mine is S three zero three dash zero zero two two one. So if I'm correct, this is razor number two hundred and twenty one. So that's pretty stellar in the top three hundred or in the top two fifty. So sweet and uh oh yes one more thing i wanted to mention because i'm trying to get as much information on this as possible um these stainless razors are coated or they're they're they've been pacificated i guess how you pronounce that so basically that's dipping them in an acid bath and it coats the stainless to make it impervious to rust so so there you go and they do all that in-house so like every other razor um you know, as Chris and other cut above mentioned, the stainless on these will will attract fingerprints. It's like any other razor. When you're done, just take it apart, dry it on a dry spot of your uh, your shaving towel, put it back in a uh, in a stand, and then that will keep it looking pristine until the next shave. And if you want to put your hands on it and look at it and admire it and love it, then just give it a quick wipe with a towel before you put it away. But your fingerprints should not. They should not stain it or cause any rust or any issues since it has been pacificated. So for the aftershave, I'm going to go with First Canadian Kink. This is a very coffee-forward splash, one of my favorite scents, if not my favorite. And it'll prove to be a good foil with the smooth operator. Different scent profiles, but I've used these both in tandem before, and they play very nicely together. Yeah, that was a very, very smooth shave. Wonderful. All right, dry the hair, wash the hands off right quick before I handle this. So once again, a recap, we had uh, Purely Skinful Smooth Operator. So Linda, if you catch this, I really hope you're feeling better soon and hope everything works out good for you. Um, we'll be rooting for you in the group and all of us in our shaves. Um, so we wish you all the best. We had the Coyote Cuts Psychedelic Funk 24 millimeter knot, still chock full of lather. Of course, the Curve Christopher Bradley with the in stainless steel, the Argyle handle, which is just a beautiful, beautiful knurling. And uh, this is cut into the, um, right into the barrel. 
So it's not sharp on the fingers, it provides a very good purchase point and this will not wear away like um, handles that are formed with the knurling. That over time they will, they will wear out, it will get smooth. This will not. So just meticulous attention to detail in the Voskhod on the C plate. And then first Canadian kink as the aftershave. So that is the shave and review. Uh, thank you so much for tuning into this. I do appreciate it. Uh, going to be lots more videos coming up. And um, so yeah, stay tuned for uh, the weekend where I will do a shootout with this and the, uh, the B plate open comb. As always, friends, have a great day and even better shave. We'll catch you in the next one.